Good morning, Stringers. This is Voodoo Stick Mod, and I am here with another episode of STFA TV. And today we're going to be making the bookshelf zipper bag. This is done completely in the hoop and includes lots of applique. Uh, this is the five by seven size. Today I'm going to be making the six by 10 size. I have printed out the color stop sheet and I have made some notes on it. It is a very long color stop sheet. There are 46 color stops, but don't let that intimidate you. A lot of the stops are just appliques, which are forced by using different colors. So it's not as bad as it looks. The first three steps are our basic construction steps that every bag has. It's gonna be our initial die lines, our zipper tack down, and our um, fat, uh, exterior tack downs for whatever you choose, be it vinyl or fabric. I'll go into more detail about any chain, any differences between using vinyl or fabric in a bit. Then we have a whole lot of applique. So it's going to be a placement die line followed by a tack down and rinse and repeat till you get through color shop 21. Then you have a bunch of detail designs uh, steps. Those are all so this you're gonna do in your fabric colors or vinyl colors. These you're gonna do in whatever you want because nobody's gonna see it at the very end. The design detail steps, which are color steps 22 through 39, you're going to want to either use the colors listed or similar if you want it to look just like or similar to the sample I showed or the colors that you see on the books. Otherwise, you can change these colors to be whatever you want to match the fabrics that you choose for the appliques of your books. Then you're going to have five, one, two, three, four, six more stops that are going to be more construction, which is adding lining pieces, adding hardware, adding your exterior back and lining back pieces. Those you're, again, going to want to do in a thread that matches whatever you chose as the base material of your bag. The very last color stop is always put in there, but it is a do not stitch color stop. This is a dead stop that Ricky adds to force machines off to the side instead of auto centering. When a design finishes, most machines auto center. We don't want that to happen, especially on a single needle, because um, if it auto centers, you have all this hardware in here and it can cause things to catch and pull and tear and cause all sorts of chaos at the end. And we don't want that to happen when you've gone through all this work to make this bag. So don't stitch that very last color stop. I'll remind you of that when we get further on in the bag. So let's take a look at what we're all going to need to make this bag. We're going to need a hoop with some medium weight cutaway. Um, we say medium weight cutaway. I use a 2.5 ounce cutaway. That's what I consider medium weight. Um, so we got that. We're going to need some exterior pieces. I'm choosing fabric for this bag because it's got so much applique on it. Now I did do a, another sample in vinyl and you could use vinyl and that's perfectly fine. The uh, measurements in your PDF are going to be for fabric, which will also work for vinyl. You won't have to make any adjustments to the measurements. So that will all be in your instructional PDF that comes along with the files. So I have a piece for the back and I have two pieces for the front in which I have applied a woven interfacing to give the fabric more body. I have also turned under a half inch on the two pieces that'll be used to the front giving me a nice folded edge to place along the zipper so there's no raw edges. I, when I do this, I use my interfacing to give me that edge. So I cut the interfacing a half inch shorter and then fold it, use that as my guide to fold over to give me my, my presses there. So that's our exterior fabric. You're going to need three pieces of fabric for the lining. Again, the two pieces will be on the, the back side, the lining of the front of the bag will need to be pressed under one half inch. Now these you just have to measure and do um, in another video, I believe it was the 
possibly the Nintendo controller bag. I used a tool called a hot hammer, which is essentially like a heavy felt flexible ruler that has measurements on it that it's okay to press on. So if you want information about that, just look up hot hammer in a Google search and it should come up. So we have our lining fabrics. We are going to need a whole bunch of fabrics for the appliques for the books. And you can use whatever scraps you want. All of mine have heat and bond applied to the back just because I think it makes it a nice clean edge to cut when I'm, when I'm cutting the appliques out. Uh, you can put a woven interfacing on the back. You, I suggest doing one or the other because then that way it helps with any pulling out from underneath the uh, applique satins because the fabric comes unraveled. Um, I have had somebody, some people in the past have, get confused between heat and bond and a fusible web. Heat and bond, I use heat and bond light. You don't want to use the ultra because that you're not supposed to sew through. Heat and bond light is a, basically a film. It looks like plastic after you iron it on and it has paper on one side. So you're going to cut it, put it on your fabric. You're going to press it for a few seconds to adhere the one side. Before you stitch the applique, you're going to then peel the paper off. And then that way, technically, if you could iron this in place, I don't do that as I'm going through the in the hoop stuff because obviously I'm not gonna try to stick an iron in the hoop. But after it's all said and done, if I press it, it will ad basically lightly adhere the two fabrics together, which isn't necessary because it's all appliqued on. But like I said, it gives me a cleaner edge when I trim and it makes it more difficult for the fabric to fray and pull out from under the applique. A fusible web is a very different product. It is... It often doesn't have, if you peel, it, it's a basically to fuse two fabrics together. And a lot of times that doesn't work because you need to lay it in between the fabrics and fuse. So if you try to fuse it to the back of a fabric and then apply it later, you're going to just end up with a lot of this stuff stuck to your iron and nobody wants that. So if you're going to use something like I'm using, it is called Heat and Bond Light. What else are we going to need? We're going to need two pieces of either fabric or ribby ribbon that is two inches wide by one inch tall and folded in half. And that is going to be our zipper stops. I'm choosing to use fabric on this bag, but you can use ribbon. As long as it's ribby ribbon, I don't recommend satin ribbon. It frays way too easy in cases like this. You're going to need though two pieces of ribby ribbon that are 5 eighths by 3 inches to use for your hardware attachments. I say two. Technically, you can do one, two, or three. You can put one off to the side, two on the top, or two on the top, and one on the side, whatever you want. You're going to need hardware in whatever amount of ribbons you choose, one, two, or three. I choose to use D-rings on the top of my bags. You can do lobster claws instead. You can do D-rings on the top, lobster claw off the side, or any combination of them. I prefer D-rings on the bags, and then I can I make my straps to have the clips on them. I believe that is all the actual usable fabric and supplies. You're also going to need some applique scissors of some sort, double curves, duck bills, whatever, manicure scissors, whatever you like best. I always have a pair of snips and tweezers around for thread tails. I have a seam ripper for later use for when removing the stabilizer from behind the zipper. Um, I have a rotary cutter and I have some regular scissors over here for at the very end. I have tape for taping things down because we are going to have to put some things on the back of the hoop and gravity is not our friend in that instance. This is a very heavy tape dispenser I bought on Amazon. It's got some weight to it, can be used as a weapon if needed for any reason. 
So I think that is everything we're, oh, this is a really long bag, so I suggest having some form of hydration product with you because you're gonna wanna hydrate during this one. Now that we have all of that covered, let's go ahead and put our medium cutaway, which has been hooped, into our machine and run color stop one. Okay, we have stitched color stop one, which has given us all of our dye lines. We have a whole bunch of them on the front. The first thing I'm going to do is add some lines on the back that are going to make my life easier later on when I'm adding my lining. Um, I actually stopped my dye line partway through so I could stitch the bobbin in a different color so it showed up better for you guys. So on the back, there's this center dye line. That we're going to actually have to remove that cutaway later in order to use our bag because the zipper is going to be over this. So I'm just going to use my ruler and a pen and I'm going to extend those lines. That'll make it easier for me to use um, these as guides to line up my lining fabrics when I attach them later. Um, if you did not change your bobbin, which you wouldn't, because it's literally one color stop and you'd have to stop the machine when it got to the right point. You, It's the third line from the top and the one, two, third line from the bottom is what you wanna mark. All right, now that we have done that, there is one thing I forgot to tell you. That you were going to need. You're gonna need a zipper. You're gonna need a zipper that is at least two inches wider than the opening of your bag. I buy all my zippers at 14 inches in bulk because then that way I always have the right length for what I wanna make, be it a five by seven or an eight by 12 size bag. So as long as I have the right color, I know I have a zipper long enough. That's why I buy them all one length. I'm going to use the second line from the top and the bottom to line up my zipper to tape it in place. Okay. This zipper is a little bit wavy, so I'm gonna add an extra stabilizing piece of tape right in the center. Add a piece of tape right there. Okay, so that's all stuck down. You, this is a number three zipper. I use number three zippers because I make a lot of bags and it's just more cost efficient for me to use these pre-made number three zippers. You can use zipper tape if you are using number five zipper tape. It's going to be a little trickier to line it up because the actual tape is going to be wider than these die lines. And what you're gonna need to do is you're going to need to use these two center lines to line up the teeth on that number five zipper exactly. Okay, so it is trickier, but it can be done. Now that I have my zipper taped in place, I'm going to put, to put the hoop back on the machine and I'm going to run color stop two and then I will be back. Okay, I have stitched color stop two. I'm going to remove this piece of tape because I only put it there to keep the zipper lined up with this die line. Um, this zipper was very wavy and I have noticed through all of my stitching that sometimes wavy zippers even if you tape them really nice and snug on the ends, will shimmy a little in the middle. So I just add that just to hold it in place while it stitches. Now I'm gonna take my zipper tab fabrics, and again, you can use rib ribby ribbon for this. There is the folded edge here and the raw edges out here. I'm going to place the folded edge toward the center of the bag and put it approximately halfway, half in, half out of this side die line, okay? Folded edge to the inside, about half in, half out, and tape it in place, okay? Now I'm going to take my exterior fabric or vinyl, whichever you choose to use, I'm going to place that down and I'm going to tape, okay? 
Then I'm going to take the bottom exterior and I'm going to place that again, making sure my fold is right up against the zipper teeth. And I'm going to tape that down there. And then I'm going to put a few pieces on the corners to hold that in place. Okay, now I'm going to put this back on my machine and I am going to run color stop three and four. Three is gonna tack down my fabrics. Four is gonna give me my first placement line for my appliques. So we're in color stops three and four and meet me back here. Okay, color stop three has been stitched as well as color stop four, which is our first placement for our appliques. Color stop three stitches all the way along the bottom. It stitches about, I don't know, seven eighths ish of the top. This is what we want. We don't want it to finish this because we need to have this stuff open so we can move our zipper head in later. So don't worry if it doesn't go all the way across on the top because of the way this, these are line bags. It's different from the old style bags that only had a partial lining. So that's okay. That will be finished off later on. So now time to start the applique frenzy. I'm going to take the fabric for my first applique. You don't have to cut it to be precise, it just has to be bigger than what's there. So I just need to make sure that the whole die line is covered. Okay. I am going to, since this is such a large piece over here, I am going to just trim this down just to make it easier. So I'm going to lay this down, okay? You can tape it if you like, or you can live on the wild side like me and just leave it set there. Now I'm going to put this back on my machine and I'm going to run the next color step. Should be five, and that's gonna tack this down. And then we will be back and I'm gonna tell you what to do for the next part. Okay, it has run color step five, which has tacked down this piece of fabric. Now I'm going to grab some scissors for applique cutting, and I am going to trim as close to those stitches as I can get without snipping into them. You can, again, you can use whatever, whatever scissors you find work best for you. I find in some areas duck bills work great for me and others the double curves give me a closer cut. Okay. Just snipping some of this stuff away. All right, turning. Turn the hoop, not your wrist. It's better for your wrist. Okay. Kind of Tugging a little on the on the fabric also keeps it nice and uh, taut, so you get a nice clean cut. Okay, if you see any spots that you don't feel you got close enough, you can always go back in and snip. I'm just gonna seam roll that a little bit. Okay, now what we're what's gonna happen is this video is going to go into a time lapse. Okay, and it's going to be sped up a bit because nobody wants to sit and listen to me go run color stop six, place fabric, run color stop seven, trim, run color stop eight, etc. So what is going to happen is this is going to be a sped up part of the video because all you're gonna do is you're gonna keep doing exactly the last two things I did here, stitch the placement, place the fabric, stitch the tack down, trim. You're gonna keep repeating that until you're all the way through color stop 21. After 21, we will meet back here and we will uh, go over what the next step is.
this is our last applique. So I'm coming back in to speaking again so that I can explain what we do after we trim this one. So as you can see, all those other ones were just basically a rinse and repeat of what had come before. You're running the placement line, you're placing the fabric, you're running the tack down, you're trimming the fabric. And you just keep doing that over and over until all of your books are in place. I'm just going through making sure there's no places I want to trim a little closer. I'm gonna give it one little once over with my lint roller. Okay, all right, so now all these are appliqued on. So now we're ready for it to stitch all the design work. So for that, that's simple enough. You're just going to run color stops 22 through 39. Come back to see me before you stitch 40. Okay, all of the pretty design work has now been stitched. So now we can move on to our last few steps, which is going to be adding our lining. And then our final backing fabric for the exterior in our hard way. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to open all these tapes up here so that we can slip the zipper open a little bit. Okay, don't worry about the tapes because we're going to close those back up again in a minute. Now I'm going to take my seam ripper and I'm going to go between the teeth and I'm going to, oops, I'm going to slice a little hole in the stabilizer. Now I'm going to flip everything over and I'm going to use my scissors to trim out this stabilizer that covers the back of the zipper here. So I'm just going to one edge and I'm going up. Now you don't want to cut out past these lines that are the next ones out from the zipper area because those are what are holding your fabric in place. So you want to just trim just to the outside of those center two lines. Oops, I'm off camera, sorry. And there. So yeah, I just want to trim out just where those center two sections were, okay? And now this is where adding those lines in helped. The first part we're going to add is the lining that will be covering this bottom half. So I'm gonna take my fabric, which has been pressed under a half inch. I'm gonna take that fold and I'm gonna make sure my side and bottom die lines are covered and I'm going to line it up the fold with those extender lines that I penned in. And then I'm going to tape this down, okay, on the sides. Ready? Tape that down. I'm going to flip this over, give it a little press to make sure that's really nice and stuck. Now I'm going to close my zipper back up and tuck all this stuff back where it's supposed to be. Okay, Put it all in there. Now I'm gonna put this back on the machine and I am going to run Color Stop 40, Color Stop 40. Okay, it has now run another line of stitching there and it has attached to the back. A lining piece to the bottom section. I'm just cleaning up any thread tails. Now I'm going to grab my smaller piece of lining and I'm going to use these upper lines and I'm going to line that up and tape this down. Okay, now I'm going to put this back on the machine. Whoops, that one's a little off. Let's fix that. Okay. And I'm going to run color stop 41. 
Okay, I have now run Color Stop 41, which went most of the way across the top again. Now, this is why this was left open. Now I'm gonna take off most of these tapes and I'm going to open my zipper up. If that hadn't been left open like that, you would have had to try to push the zipper through this little opening here. And it can be done, but it's rather tricky and can be difficult. So uh, this is why this is left open. So now that's all tucked back in. Zipper is open, this is all tucked back in. And now I'm going to put this back on the machine and run Color Stop 42, which is going to finish this and then place the uh, placement lines for all of the hardware options. Okay, so now it has finished stitching here and it has added three placement lines so that I can add my hardware. I'll kind of come up a little, I'm not sure if you can see that. So I'm going to grab my ribbon and my D-rings and I am choosing to use just the top two. Again, you can choose the top two, just the one on the side, or you can do all three. It's totally up to you. So I like to use I like to pull my ribbon tight and use the, the D-ring as my placement. And I place mine so that the flat part is just under this stitching line, which works on my multi-needle. If you have a single needle, you are going to want to drop that down so that the flat bar sits over the zipper just to give your foot enough room up here when it's stitching so it doesn't knock your hardware out of alignment. Yes, I know that from experience because I also have a single needle that I use from time to time. So yes, if you're using a multi-needle, this flat part can be just under the stitching line. If you're using a single needle, you'll want to drop it down a little farther so that you have some more room for your foot. And now I'm just gonna use these tapes to tape this. And I have taped the ribbon down. I have also taped the hardware down so that it doesn't bounce around and get hit by the needle. That's never a good sound. So now I'm going to put this back on the machine. I'm going to run Color Stop 43, which will tack all of these down. Okay, my hardware has been tacked down, so now I can take off the tapes on the ribbon. I can take this one off of here. I'm going to grab my backing fabric, and I'm going to lay it on top, and then I'm going to use the tape again to just hold it all in place. Now this is, if you notice, Pretty side to pretty side, okay? Okay, so now this can go back on the machine and we are going to run Color Stop 44. Okay, Color Stop 44 has been run and it attached what will be the exterior back of the bag. Now we're going to flip everything over and I'm just gonna take a few minutes just to clean up some of this stuff here. Looking pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna take my backing, back lining piece, and I'm gonna lay that on. Now, if you're using a, a lining that actually has a right and a wrong side, you're gonna wanna put them right sides together. So pretty side to pretty side again. Oh, hi, maybe. Okay, now I'm going to put this on the machine and we are going to run Color Stop 45, four five. Okay, I am 
back after stitching color stop 45. I'm gonna pull up my tapes on the front. Don't need to stitch the last color stop. Like I said, that was just a dead stop. I'm gonna pull these tapes off on the back. Okay. Now we're going to take this stuff out of the hoop. Okay, now you have a few options. Now you can use, well, actually first, we're gonna flip this over and there's an opening here. This is our turning hole. So we need to make turning tabs. So I'm just gonna cut from the exterior up to, but not through the stitching line. Okay, now I'm gonna take a piece of tape and I'm gonna push that back out of the way because we need to trim around this, but we don't wanna cut that off. Okay, bye Meeps. So we can either use a rotary cutter and cut around, okay? Or we can use scissors, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to start by trimming the sides, okay? And the bottom. Those are basic simple cuts because of that, okay? There's nothing that we have to worry about accidentally cutting off. Okay, so now we wanna trim this without cutting this off. You can simply take your, it's actually easier to go from this side, take your ruler and cut it off, okay? Um, I do mine differently because I don't want to cut my ribbons down. Okay, so I'm actually, that's why I tape it out of the way. I'm gonna flip this over, I'm gonna move my ribbons out of the way, and I'm going to trim from the front, just lifting up the fabric so I can see all that. Okay, and I'm gonna, and that, see, I've trimmed that without cutting off my little tabs. So now I can get rid of that tape, but now I have this here. So all I have to do with that is, pick up my ribbons again, and then just cut from this side. Now again, you can do this with scissors and just cut around if you would like. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm going to round off these corners so that when I turn the bag, the corners turn nicer and push out without a bunch of bulk in the corners that make it look awkward. Again, I'm making sure my ribbons are out of the way. Okay. Now, if you've done your bag with vinyl, I suggest warming your vinyl before you do this turning process. You All you have to do is just take a warm iron and just set it on there until you heat up the vinyl or you can use a hair dryer if you want. But I have done mine in fabric, so it makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna reach in and I am going to turn my bag. And it, right now I'm fine with the fact that it looks like the bag will be inside out, which it will, because right now all you're seeing is the lining. You're not seeing the rest and that's fine. In fact, I recommend that to make the next part easier. It's easier if the bag is still inside out. All right, so now that is all turned, but the bag is inside out, and that's okay. I'll just take this off since it's hanging out. Because now I need to close this up. So you can eat, you can tuck in your tabs, and you can do a few different things. I'm just opening my zipper to pull out this other tape to make it easier. So you can grab a needle and thread, and you can whip stitch or ladder stitch this closed. Or, sorry, I had to go into my other room to get something. Okay, now I'm back. And if you don't want to sew it or you don't, you're not a needle and thread kind of person, you can try to use a little a, a bit piece of stitch witchery and press that closed, but I find that kind of difficult. 
So I just used some craft glue, craft glue, tacky glue, Fabri-Tac, any kind of craft slash fabric glue works. And I just run a little bit of glue right there underneath that stitch line. And then I just glue it shut. It's so far up in the bag that nobody has ever complained to me about this, okay? Because when I turn it again, this is going to be way up in that little piece on the upper side. Nobody's ever going to see it. So now I've opened my zipper before. If you haven't done that, you can do that now. And now I'm just going to turn the bag right side out, okay? If you have, if you use a different glue than what I did, like a... Some glues will take a little longer to dry. This stuff that I buy, it's like, it's called Helmar Craft, Premium Craft Glue, and it dries really fast. So I can turn out the bag right away without that coming undone up there. All right, and right now I'm just kind of pushing out the corners with my fingers, but you can grab a chopstick or a turning, dowel, uh, the blunt end of one of these type of seam rippers. And now I'm just gonna make sure that those corners are nice and pushed out. And zip that up. And then, because it's fabric, it lays pretty flat, but I'll probably take this over to my ironing station and I'll just give it a quick press. If you used vinyl, it's not gonna wanna lay quite as flat. So what you can do is fold a piece of felt over the top and put some clips on it to hold it for a few hours. You can lay it under a giant stack of really heavy books, or if you have a heat press, you can press it in that without the heat on. Just use the weight of the press as a substitute for a stack of heavy books. But now you're all, all you need to do is create or purchase a strap of your choosing and you have a bookshelf zip bag all set to go out. Hopefully you found this video helpful. It, your files will also come with a written instructional PDF of everything I did in this video. If you have any questions, you can ask them on the String Theory Facebook group it's www.facebook.com slash STFA fan club or fan group. Um, I'm sure that you're already in it though. You can get this purchase the design at www.stringtheoryfabricart.com.